नमः विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण प्रष्टाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवानि प्रचारने निर्विशेष शुंगिवानि पाश्चात्य देशिता आइए आचार तो प्रभुपाद प्रभुपाद मेमोरीज राइट आई केम आई हैव सीन प्रभुपाद ओह आई जॉइन द टेंपल February 1973. I was 17. Western 17. That's 17 complete, 18 running in India. And uh, one year I stayed in the temple and we didn't see Prabhupada. In Chicago. Yeah, in Chicago. Chicago, it in as it's said in India. Yeah, our pronunciation is Chicago. Although the long-time mayor of Chicago at that time used to say Chicago. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone pronounces it differently. Like yesterday, Jaguar. I never heard that before. Live and learn, you know, we say Jaguar. English? What happened? We just lost, we just lost the mic. English? Oh, okay. yeah. Battery down. Hare Krishna. English is not a phonetic language, as many of you probably know. Perfect language is Sanskrit, but Hare Krishna. We're weak. Manda Sumanda Mataya, dull headed. So, anyway, I came to Bombay a year after joining, and the next day Prabhupada came. And Right, so he was lecturing every day. He would meet the public. Public means selected people he would meet at four in the afternoon. They called it the darshan time. On the roof, was it? On the no, roof? No, in the apartment in Juhu, there were f six buildings and they had one apartment for Prabhupada. Uh, they were two-story buildings, ground and first. Later, later, on, later they, they made it. The second floor. Yeah. Later on, when I came, there was a huge hut made out of bamboo, and there were thousands of rats. It looked like not thousands, but there were a lot of rats. Very simple. <laughs> Prasadam was terrible. Devotees were living in that. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember how many, must have been 20, 25, 30. And more rats. Tatpur Maharaj, the lady Tatpur was the cook. And I mean, it was, everyone was sick. It was horrible. Really bad prasad. Sorry to tell you the truth. So at that time, Prabhupada had only one secretary come servant, which was Satsvarup Maharaj. Satsvarup. Secretary would type letters. There were no laptops. There were typewriters. And Prabhupada would dictate letters and the secretary would type the letter. Every day there was correspondence. And then the servant would cook and massage Prabhupada. At that time there was no servant. There was a gap. And Satsvarup was doing both jobs. Happened to be our GBC for Chicago, so he asked me to come and help him clean Prabhupada's pots. They were cooking, he was cooking for Prabhupada in very small pots. So one day I was, in, during, I was there for, I think it was 10 days, 10 days or 12 days. And then we went to Maya. So I was cleaning the pots and suddenly the door flew open and Prabhupada was standing there only in a kurta. It was a long kurta. Can't you hear someone is at the door? 
I bowed down and I said, no. And I went to the door and, you know, there was a devotee who was ringing the bell to get in. So I got some mercy from Prabhupada like that. And because I was cleaning these pots, I would sit and listen to him preach. And I remember the book came out, Scientific Basis of Krishna Consciousness. And Prabhupada was praising, he's no longer with us, our God brother Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj, who was a PhD in chemistry and had written this book. And Prabhupada was praising the book like anything. So what you just said, Maharaj, that Prabhupada wanted his disciples to write, I saw it firsthand. You know, that's what you said is a hundred percent true. I mean, if I could comment ideologically, we see that people like to change the philosophy to suit their own tastes. And that's the problem. Mm. And that's the problem. And I think that problem is from a long time. It's not just in our lifetime. Even in the Gaudiya Mutt, I don't know how much I should comment because, you know, when Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, you scholar of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, when he disappeared, the, the mud was split uh, in an out of court settlement by the two leading factions. One of those factions, they stopped chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra in Kirtan for 20 years until they discovered Gai Gaur Madhur Sware, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> then they started chanting, but they had to chant Gai Gaur Madhur Sware. Funny thing. Prabhupada was very strict, no doubt. He saw this tendency to deviate, so he spoke against that so many times. I can't remember the specific, you know, there, there's so many things that I've forgotten. You know, it's, that's another thing. Time is such a thing, right? Matasmati jnanam apohanam cha. Krishna says in Gita that I am remembrance, forgetfulness, and intelligence. Mataha, nay, from me, smriti, jnana, knowledge, apohana, forgetfulness. Then we went to Mayapur, Prabhupada was in Mayapur lecturing on Chaitanya Charitamrita. First, uh, it had just been published, which is today Adi Nila Volume 2. Prabhupada was lecturing on that. There was only one building in Mayapur. Prabhupada had his room there and we were all staying in the same building, which is Kamal Baba Lotus Building. It's hard for me to remember exactly what he said in those lectures. I don't remember, I don't recall much. I remember everyone was sick. I remember Achyutananda, I had joined his party, who's no longer a sannyasi, but at that time he was Achyutananda Swami. Took us to Sridhar Maharaj's mat for prasad. And the prasad was the best. Compared to Isk, there was no comparison. What we were eating, everyone was sick, terrible prasad. Those were the days, it's changed. What is it? 180 degrees, total change. Iskan has the best prasad. Huge prasad arrangements. Anyway, later on, uh, Prabhupada chastised the Chutananda and said, why did you take everyone there? You, you heard that story, right? Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, we heard that second hand. We didn't hear it directly from Prabhupada, but it happened there at that time. Because someone criticized this Khan. And, and Prabhupada was very on that point also. Uh, why should this Khan be criticized? In, in, in the program they organized at Sridhar Maharaj's Mat, someone, Maharaj gave, said something to someone said, in, in a lecture was it? No, we didn't hear anything. It was a oh. private conversation, as far as I recall. Mm -hmm. All I remember was the prasad was out of this world and it was really, really good. 
And the prasad in Iskan was really, really bad. There were 400 devotees from all over the world. So that was the first really big Gorpurnima. Really big. And before that, there were 50, 100. This was 1974 Gorpurnima festival. Then we came here to Vrindavan. And up, we were staying in the Fogla, Fogla Ashram. And opposite that, now it's totally changed. There was a big open ground. Now they made a guest house in that open ground. Opposite the Fogla, there was a 24 hour kirtan. Sita Ram, Sita Ram. Sita Ram, 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 Jai Sita Ram. So in his lecture, Prabhupada said, You have come to Vrindavan, now try to understand Radha Krishna. Now, in other places, Prabhupada talks about Ramachandra. But he kept saying this, you have come to Vrindavan, now try and understand Radha Krishna. So, I'm just relating what I remember. Um, the temple was under construction, Krishna Balaram. And we didn't have much personal association with Prabhupada at that particular time. But he split the devotees. And, and wanted 200 devotees to go back to Mayapur and spend an extra month to learn Varnashram. This I remember. So, Varnashram meant uh, simple village activities. You know, uh, what Gandhi also propagated, Gramudyo, village industry. There was, you know, pot making, madanga making, different type of things like that. It, it wasn't 100% clear and Prabhupada himself didn't go back to Mayapur but he wanted 200 devotees to go back to Mayapur and learn simple village type of it. That was his vision for Mayapur. Unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know because he also wanted it to be a big preaching place and that's why he wanted the big temple. We know that he wanted a big temple in Mayapur. And whatever this TOBP looks like, you know, there's a controversy how it looks, but it's being done. And the fruit is that a lot of people are coming to Mayapur now. I mean, a heck of a lot of people. Much more than in those days. Right? Mm. And still the transportation to Mayapur is, is weak, but still the people come somehow or other. So Prabhupada went, came to Vrindavan and then uh, from Vrindavan 200 devotees went to Bombay. So Achyutananda was going to Bombay. My name was put from my book. But because Achyutananda was going, he said, yeah, you can come with me. I was in his party and actually traveled with him yet, which I did later. You went in his bus? He had a van or something? No, we rented a van actually. And we went from, that was later on, September 74. We went to a place called Sirpur in Adilabad district. Sirpur Kagasnagar. Kagasnagar, where there was a paper factory of Birla. Birla's mm. paper factory. And then we went to Nagpur. And we drove from Nagpur to Vishakhapatnam through tribal areas, but no problem. And we stayed in Vishakhapatnam, then Kakinada, Rajamandri. And uh, I, 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 I was traveling in those areas in uh, late 1980s and still people would say they'd remember Achyutananda from those days. Oh, he was he very popular. 5,000 people. You also had that experience when you were in AP? No, I don't. No, no, I'm saying to Gokul Chandra, oh. he's nodding his head there. In, in 1980, 80, when were you there? In, uh, Vishakhapatnam, 99. And people remembered Achyutananda in 99? Wow. Yeah. In Alachua, a few years ago, I met Achyutananda and I told him that I, I still meet people who remember you there in South India. He said, they're all old men. They must have been young men then. He said, yeah, I was young. Now I'm old. Just the same. Right. So he probably... He made a big impact, Achyutananda. In Andhra. Yeah. Even in Karnataka, to a certain extent, Andhra Mohan. Those programs were fantastic, actually. He was very excellent speaker. Had yeah. the people, Pidram Silence, 
Thousands of people. Excellent speaker. Could take questions and yeah, answer them very brilliant. well. He was Kirtan man. He was the best. Best Kirtan player. man. In Hyderabad, Prabhupada came, see, after Bombay, Prabhupada came to Hyderabad and Tirupati. Those are part of the memories. And then after that, three months he sat in Hyderabad. He would play the tambura. I played the tambura. Achutananda would sit. Achutananda. Yeah. Before his lecture, he would do 15, 20 minutes of kirtan. After the arati. After Sunday arati, he would sit down with the tambura. And sing. And sing. And I would play the mridanga. I was the mridanga player. Dina Nath Prabhu is here. He uh, was there in Hyderabad. but he Great, great kirtan man. Great kirtan man also. Yeah. Oh, he was young and strong. He's, he's an old man. He's 69 now. Jananda Maharaj, he's 69. How he danced Still yet? dancing like a, like a nine-year-old. He's dancing like a nine-year-old. Nine -year yeah. And he just went on and on and on. He's got Krishna Shakti, I guess. You all know. <laughs> In Tirupati, some of, I, I, maybe I should just mention some of the few things, like Prabhupada bowed down like a stick, Danda Vat, in Tirupati, in front of Balaji. They stopped the queue, and we went, and the queue was like the eight, ten hour queue. There, there was no queue complex in the 70s, and the Minister of Endowments, because it's under the government, Sagi Suryanarayan Raju, came from Hyderabad to welcome Prabhupada. Fantastic darshans we had. So he bowed down and he said, Govindamadi Purusham Tamaham Bajami, just like you hear on the tape. Then he said, Balaji means Bal Krishna. I remember this, I was there. So, yeah, and Prasad there was, wow, out of the world. They, so much Prasad they sent for Prabhupada. Baskets and baskets of different types of rice. And Three days went like, yeah, there's, Yadubara was there. He didn't come with us, he came on his own. And there's a, a video, some video of Prabhupada in Tirupati. I mean, some few moments of that video. So, uh, yeah, in Hyderabad, I, 74 program, it's hard to remember much. I mean, five days. We, I remember we had Prasad in Badruka's house. Badruka is still there. He's 90 now. And uh, I remember Prab we all were sitting down on the, gr on the ground and Prabhupada, we were all eating with Prabhupada. And as soon as he finished, I was shocked to see all the devotees running towards his plate to get his remnants. I, I didn't, you know, I was a kid. I didn't know. We're supposed to take Prabhupada's remnants, I didn't know. But we were like 15 devotees or whatever. I remember Prabhupada speaking in Sanskrit with some Rajasthani Brahman in Badruka's house. I remember that. I remember it was simple, you know, few moments conversation. We used to walk in the public garden that later on... In Hyderabad. In Hyderabad, there's a public garden which wasn't far from the temple. Mm. And, and local people would come, they'd go on their morning walk and they'd meet Prabhupada. I also, one thing I remember because Prabhupada came 74, 75, and twice in 76, and we would send a postcard to the life members. Postcard was two paisa. <laughs> and the, they, they would garland Prabhupada at the airport and then, you know, the garlands would pile up and they would take them away, pile up again. They would take it off and pile up again. There were so many people came to receive Prabhupada at the airport. That was an experience to see that. Nellur, Prabhupada was received, this is, a, I'm skipping, I'm not going chronologically now. January 3rd, 1976. Nellore in, in Andhra Pradesh. Yeah, he took the train from Chennai, which was Madras. Two days in Chennai, there, there was memorable morning walk on the beach, Marina Beach, where ba the late, our godbrother Baba Bhuti said, the Gaudiya Mat Sanyasi said, if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to go to America, 
uh, why didn't he go himself? And then Prabhupada said he wanted me to go. <laughs> kind of, you know, jokingly but seriously also. So that was memorable. And then in Nellur, on the train station, there were two, three thousand people came to receive him. And, you know, the mayor, and then there were all the, the girls with the coconuts on their head, Nadaswarams and Brahmins chanting Veda mantras. And Prabhupada turned to the disciples who came in the train, like 10, 15 disciples, and said, Vedic culture is more intact in South India. So he praised South India like that. But, you know, we see Vedic culture is intact in, all over India in so many ways, among, among the Hindus, obviously not among the Muslims. <laughs> but uh, he praised like that. That I remember. We had a darshan, there's a Ranganath temple in Nelur, very famous, old. We went with Prabhupada to that temple. And then there was a morning walk, very memorable. All the morning walks, there was a lot of talk with Prabhupada in Nelur on the morning walks and those tapes were lost. Harishori posted them to Los Angeles and they never reached, unfortunately. So where he was staying, there were these two sisters who were donating the three acres of land. And in the backside, when we were leaving, I mean, they were from the ready caste, the landlord, very wealthy sisters. One was a widow and one was unmarried. They were living together. Prabhupada was staying in the house. And we were staying separately, but his team, Harikesh, was the secretary or servant maybe, and Tamal Krishna Maharaj was there. And uh, I think Harishori was also there. So he had a bigger team this time. So we walked out and there was a cage with these chickens, but not ordinary chickens, big chickens called Chinese hens. So Prabhupada saw that and he said, in Bengal they take the eggs of these chickens, boil it, and eat it with rice. He said, keeping these chickens here means these people are not vegetarians. From today, I will not eat what they cook. You have to cook for me, told the servants. So that I remember very clearly. But other things, what we had discussions, you know, I don't remember everything now, unfortunately. I never kept a diary, so, you know, I'm not, Hari Shori kept the diary, it's a great credit to him, beautiful books. I mean, you know, he's, he really captured everything what Prabhupada taught, you know, in his diaries. Oh, we took the one. 6.27. Oh, we had a lot of time. So, let's see, Hyderabad in 1975, rolling the clock back, Prabhupada came, 150 devotees came from Mayapur. And uh, there was a public program. We had big kirtans through the streets, 150 devotees, a big group. This was uh, be just before Krishna Balaram temple opened. So all the devotees went from Hyderabad, came to Vrindavan. And I attended the Krishna Balaram temple opening. I remember seeing Prabhupada on a bicycle rickshaw. It was interesting. Boy, Hyderabad. Uh, what happened at that time? He went to this, Badruka had donated to the, he had proposed to donate 565 acres of land. The donation wasn't so sincere because he took most of it back. Uh, it's a very long and checkered story. But Prabhupada came to the farm. <coughs> but before, Coming to the farm, there was a railway station, but not a station actually, a halt. <laughs> they made a sign, Dabilpur, which is where the farm was, near a town called Medchal. 
So Mechel had a station, but Dabalpur had nothing. So the head of the South Central Railway, he later on became head of all the railways, Mr. Rajan Tamilian. He came, but more important than him was the governor of Uttar Pradesh, who happened to be the ex Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Dr. M. Chennaredi. He also came. So Prabhupada used that to confirm his uh, coming to the opening of the Krishna Balaram Temple, which he did, which was a big thing. The governor of UP come to open the temple. You know, it's a funny thing that the chief ministers of UP never came to Krishna Balaram temple until the previous chief minister. He came and he held, he stayed half a day. This uh, Akhilesh Yadav. Otherwise chief ministers, you know, it's a big state, there's a lot of things. But the governor came, that was a big thing. But the governor of UP and he, he had a lot of admiration and respect for Prabhupada. So that was, you know, a big boost for Prabhupada. Prabhupada, that's another thing, you know, he, he wanted the government, he wanted to dialogue with the government, he wanted the gover government to hear his message. There's that famous picture of him giving his Bhagavatam to Lal Bahadur Shastri, who was the Prime Minister. And before ISKCON, he had invited the UP governor to Janmashtami celebration in Vrindavan and he came. Vishwanath. Vishwanath Das was Uriya. He was from Orissa. Prabhupada was bold. You know, he wanted to engage here in India. In the West, it's tough. Uh, because, well, they're not, they're not Hindus. <laughs> here, the Hindus have a natural affection for Vedic culture. But uh, devotees have... Uh, there was a famous video of Tamal Krishna Maharaj with uh, Ferdinand Marcos, who was the dictator president and then dictator of the Philippines. So Prabhupada inspired that, you know, preach to the big people. Preaching to the powerful, there was a video made of that. You remember that? No, you never saw that? Tamal Krishna with Ferdinand Marcos? Oh, I, I seem to remember, but I don't his, remember his the details. His video is still alive. Imelda Marcos. <laughs> he's, he's long gone. Long gone. So Prabhupada inspired that type of, you know, preach to the powerful. He, he definitely wanted, he met Indira Gandhi. He had a list of things. And uh, anyway, you know, Indira Gandhi was not a religious lady. Later on, we met her in 1980, Gopal Krishna Maharaj, before he took sannyas. Lokanath Swami was a sannyasi and myself. <laughs> we were with her. That's why it was shocking when she was assassinated, because we had met her personally. Boy, what else memories? Vardha. Huh? Vardha. Vardha. The Vardha. Gandhi Ashram. Ah. Uh, December 1976. Prabhupada went for two days to Gandhi Ashram, uh, Sev Ashram, near Vardha. There's a Ponar, is a, a village. And in that village there was a Gandhian who was directly with Gandhi, that was Vinoba Bhave, who was very famous, anti cow slaughter. He went on a fast to death and the government gave him some little Compensation. Anyway, he called the Acharya's conference. Teachers, I heard a lot of teachers gathered. Swami Chidananda, the late of uh, Divine Life, Shivananda, he came. And uh, I remember Prabhupada showing him pictures like we go for life members. I don't know, do your people make life members? <laughs> no, it's out of date. No? No life members. We, Prabhupada sent us to make life members. Well, he sent some of us anyway. So we used to show pictures of our activities. So Prabhupada was showing the pictures to Vinoba Bhave, just like we would when we would meet Mr. Agarwal, you know, or Mr. Patel or whatever. 
So he was showing all the pictures and Vinoba Bhave was, he was 80, 80, 85, he was quite elderly. He was a, a Gandhi associate of Gandhi. Yeah, he was a direct associate of Gandhi and this was 1976. So it was 30 years after Gandhi. And now it's 40 more years after Prabhupada. So he looked at this and he said in Hindi, he had a high-pitched voice. I'm going to imitate it now. Bhakta <laughs> like that. It was very funny. You are doing very good work. He praised Prabhupada. And then there was a lecture in the college arranged for Prabhupada. And the organizers, Prabhupada Swami will speak in Hindi. He said ten times. Prabhupada sat there. And then, when finally when he stopped introducing and stopped saying Prabhupada was speaking in, he said, I've been asked to speak in Hindi. There were like 30 devotees there. Giriraj, Jai Pataka Maharaj was there, Ananda Swarup, who became later on Sanyas, Mahaksha, who just recently left this world. So many, it was quite a good group. Uh, I was the only one from Hyderabad. Mahamsa didn't come. Tejas didn't come. Ananda Maya didn't come. So uh, he said, I've been asked to speak in Hindi, but because my disciples are here, I'll speak in English. <laughs> and then he gave the lecture in English. He didn't care. But uh, one story from Vrindavan, I was not present. It had the Gandhi Save Ashram, you mentioned something about Gandhi. Oh, right. On the morning walk, <coughs> we were with Prabhupada and I said, Srila Prabhupada, Mahatma Gandhi, and he said, don't, he cut me off. He said, don't criticize Gandhi here. This is his place, they will not understand. And I, I couldn't ask the question. <laughs> There's a, we had a very good conversation with Prabhupada, that's the most memorable of all, was uh, September 1975 in Vrindavan. And it's a long story, but Prabhupada looked at me and said, where have you come from? I said, Kathmandu. And I was trapped in Nepal for five weeks, but he didn't talk about that. Went on. And Brahmananda was there. We started talking about the Western religions, we start talking about the Jews. We're from Jewish families. Brahmananda's father was Jewish, his mother converted. Anyway. And you're from a Jewish background. Right, yeah. So Prabhupada said, don't be proud, we know about Shylock. He <laughs> said that. So Shylock is a fictitious character actually. In, a, in one of the plays, oh thank you Prabhu. The Merchant of Venice. One of the plays of Shakespeare. Who, many, who heard of the Merchant of Venice play by Shakespeare? Raise your hand. So, less than 10%, I think about 5%. Funny thing, I read the... I, I never read Shakespeare. But I read the Merchant of Venice in Manipur in 1986. Bhakti Srubh Maharaj had all the, the great books of the West. He had a huge library in, in Manipur. And I was there for five days and I, I read that. And I didn't remember the story and recently I saw, <laughs> you mentioned a cartoon. <laughs> There's a cartoon telling the whole story on the internet. Anyway. So then we were talking more because seriously. Sh because Shylock was portrayed as a, a typical Jew in the, well, the way I, Jews were considered and he was considered a very mean and bad and ruthless person. I'll explain. Yeah. Anyway, that's the point you're trying to... Christianity, Catholicism and I guess Protestant yeah. Christianity ideologically did not allow money lending. Even today, Muslims is strict. Oh, oh, how go? Watch out for the, the Deepaks. Ah. Maharaj, they'll get it. <laughs> yeah, Maharaj, they will, they will. 
Is there a message there that we're supposed to be having the arity? <laughs> well, I was, I was in Kanpur for the, uh, what was it, Dasera, burning of Ravana. And the Pandal, where we were, opposite the Ravana, started fire, caught on fire, but it was controllable. Oh, this, is, this is getting a little out of control. <laughs> no, they got it. Watch your class. Watch your kurta. No, no, sit down. Don't, too many people shouldn't come. Too many shouldn't come. Ten, ten people can handle this. I think ten, ten is enough. You don't need fifty people. Please, please sit down. Please sit down. It's under control. It's under control. It's a cause of concern, I agree. But it's unfortunate. Even if you had the RNG Maharaj, it wouldn't happen. Yeah, it's all right. Go on. What time is it? 6.40. So we got five minutes? You can go on. We'll skip the RT. Okay. So, Hare Krishna, please sit down. It's under control. The, the Deepaks, there are some Deepaks here also. Maybe somebody should see these Deepaks. Because of the heavy wind, it's a very heavy wind. It's nobody, it's nature. It's nobody's fault. Heavy wind came. Samsara Davanal. <laughs> right? Davanal. Davanal is a forest fire. Anala is fire. So yeah, uh, where were we? So we were talking with Prabhupada and it was a very serious conversation and uh, was on the main road which is now, you know, you can't, uh, another heavy wind. So somebody should look at Gokul Chandra Prabhu. I think you should... Extinguish all these deepums. Yeah, extinct because of the heavy wind, better you put out the... Good idea. What to do? Safety first. Yeah. Better be safe. You can see the wind. <laughs> Dust. It's a sudden storm. Sudden storm. We're getting Vraj Dhuli. It's a windstorm. In our eyes. Yeah, the dust is Vraj Raj. We're being blessed with the dust of Govardhan. Giriraj Maharaj Ki Jai. <laughs> Prabhupada's great desire to come here at the end in a bullock cart. And the devotees were very afraid I wasn't here. But the stories were like that. Prabhupada said, I'm going to go. To my last wish is to go to Govardhan on a bullock cart. Oh no, Prabhupada won't survive. He was of skin and bones at that time. And anyway, he passed away two days later. Right, and two days later he disappeared. So, yeah, you were way. talking about Shylock, and you were saying very oh, serious. Shylock was... Just mentioned. Oh, I didn't finish that part, you're right. Christianity and Islam don't allow money lending with interest. And so the Jews... So the Jews did that because the Jews were discriminated against. They were kept separate in Europe. They were kept away from the rest of the people. So how could they earn so they would lend money? It became, you know, one of the occupations that was accepted because Christians thought we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't lend money with interest. So. Shylock was a money usury. lender in the play. Usury. Usury means interest. Lending with interest. So he was vilified by Shakespeare. Shakespeare cast him as the, uh, what, what do you call it? The, the villain. villain. A pound of flesh. A right. pound of flesh. A, a merchant of Venice needed money. Uh, that was also a love story. 
to win the hand of a, of a woman in England, by the way. That was the story. Is that thunder? It's Agasura. <laughs> so yeah, uh, anyway, Shylock was seen as a, a maybe dark, if, maybe if, character. Maybe if you almost he wanted more than money, he wanted the pound of flesh. <coughs> because that merchant had treated him very badly. So when he had to, when he came to him for money, then he said, okay, but sign a bond that if you don't repay me, I can take uh, equal amount of flesh out of your body. So he was, it, it was seen as joking, but then later on he demanded the flesh in the play. So the play portrayed him as a very wicked... And Prabhupada knew that whole story. He yeah. must have studied it in college, I guess. Well, Prabhupada studied at Scottish Church's college. Mm where English literature was taught. And uh, Shakespeare is one of the, you know, most famous uh, English poets. The. So definitely. The Bard. The Bard. B-A-R-D. He's, he's, he's called The Bard, which the mean, Bard. means he's... The greatest uh, yeah. literature, literary yeah. figure in English history. He's can still considered like Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. He wrote many, many dramas and uh, mostly dramas. It was, he yeah. was a, a dramatist. They were a traveling troupe of, of dramatists and he wrote the plays. Was it 500 years ago? Yeah. 400. Yeah. Elizabeth. Anyway, get back to the... Uh, so Prabhupada, then we asked him, this is very important. Is it better to worship the one God of the Western religions or worship the demigods? So he said it's better to worship the demigods because by worshiping the demigods, following the Vedic system, you get gradual elevation. And then he said these religions are the, the Western religions, are the religions of the meat eaters. So he spoke about the Western religions with di obvious disdain. Now this was private. Publicly, you know, Jesus is our guru, Muhammad is our Shakti Avatar, Jesus is a Shakti Avatar, but privately, Prabhupada did not respect the Western religions. Sorry to have to tell you that. Is it raining? Sounds like that, yeah. It's raining out there? <laughs> Unseasonal rain. After Diwali, first time, I, I know up to Diwali I remember rain, but after Diwali I don't remember ever seeing rain. In this part of India? Yeah, very in India. Very in this insistent. part, in Bengal you can still get. In Bengal they have the storm season, yeah. Western India I've seen it up, raining up to Diwali, but never, and that's also very rare. This is just going to be a few minutes. It's uh, just a, Mm. Gone. So that was, uh, Prabhupada was propagating the Vedic system. That was very clear and in the purports, he mentions this many, many times. In Vedic culture, this is the Vedic system. So there's no doubt in my mind he was an ambassador of Vedic culture, representative of Vedic culture. And there's a Vedic dress, which he stressed, and that, you know, one of our God brothers, as we know, is propagating that, well, it's mundane, it's not spiritual. But Prabhupada said this is the dress in, of Vaikuntha, the dress of the spiritual world. So we may not understand how that actually is, because matter and antimatter, right? That easy journey to other planets. Prabhupada talks about antimatter. And the spiritual world, Urva Mula Madha Shakam, the upside down banyan tree. But everything that's here is there, but it's such a common, it's transcendent. You could speak about uh, Kapatri Maharaj, then the, uh, right, the Gangeshwara Nanda, and the Akhanda Nanda. Right. So when this temple. It's very interesting. Listen to this. Pardon? 
is very interesting. Because Prabhupada so much against Mayavad. Listen to this. Second hand, uh, I wasn't personally present, but Jasomati Nandan Prabhu. Prabhupada sent him to, in send him to invite prominent Mayavadis to the opening of the Krishna Balaram temple. So you may say, well, we hate Mayavadis. We shouldn't have anything to do with them. We should never touch them. And of course, there's that famous verse, touched by the milk of a serpent. What is it? The uh, you know that. I, I didn't memorize that one. Avaishnava mokhod gyarnam putam harikatam harikatam shravanam naiva kartavyam sarpo chishtam yatha payam sarpo chishtam the remnants of us the, the contaminated by the lips of a serpent sarpo chishtam yatha payam yatha payaha payam payaha is payaha should, should be yatha payam because that's the object of a sentence it's Anyway, grammar, forget grammar. Yata payaha. Yata, like payaha. But why did he invite these Mayabhadis? So my conjecture is that we're... He wrote in other places that they're transcendentalists. Mm. The Mayabhadis are transcendentalists. Now there's different types of Mayabhadis. The Buddhists are atheists. They're not... The, the transcendentalist Prabhupada was talking about. It's the Shankara, Shankara Matam, those who follow Shankara, Adi Shankara Chari. <coughs> so these people accept Vedas and we accept Vedas. And in Vedas there is no difference. And so in Gurukula, Vedas should be taught, I, I think. And I've seen Madhva Brahmins and Ramanuja Brahmins studying Vedas. It's a fact that more Brahmins in India are smarter Brahmins. Now I why that is, is another subject matter. I went to a Rig Veda Madhva Brahmin Guru Kul near Sri Rangam some 15 years ago, was it? 2003 or 2000, when, when did we? Come with the vehicle and the Radha Govinda, what's his name? Radha Govinda? When was that? 2003, 2004. There was a Tirupati, we had the ICC meeting, and then we, the vehicle came separately. I came in the train and we came to Salem. From Salem, we went to Sri Rangam and we stopped at this Madhva Rigveda Guruku. So, my opinion is that we should study Vedas, the children, first. But the point Prabhupada invited the Mayavadis to the Vrindavan opening. Right, so Karpatri was very famous. He was called Dharma Samrat, the emperor of religion. He was an extremely learned scholar. And he, he was based in? Kashi, hmm. in Banaras. Hmm. But you know, they traveled around and he has an ashram here. This Danuka next to Iskan were his disciples, his mm -hmm. devotees. So, he, was a, he was a big exponent of Srimad Bhagavatam. No, that was Akhandananda translated the Bhagavatam into Hindi for the oh, Gita it? Press. Uh -huh. Akhanda, before he took sannyas, he was a Chobe, Chobeji or whatever it was. But he was a Mayavadi. He was another Mayavadi but brilliant scholars. These were very scholarly. You got uh, uh, Vedartha Parijat was written by Karpatri. Mm. I have the book, I haven't read it. I got it for you, for this, uh, what is it? Aparashaya Tattva, mm. Ishwara Aparashaya. So he, he was a very scholarly, so he told Jasomati Naman, I cannot come because your guru is giving Brahman threads to foreigners. Malachas and Yavanas is true. We are Malachas and Yavanas, and Prabhupada did give the Brahman threads. Then he went to Akhandananda and Akhandananda came. There was a picture of Prabhupada and Akhandananda, myself in the background, with Raja Shekhar. Where is he? He's not in the team. And uh, he got that picture and put it in a, a letter to Bhuvaneshwar, and it was love. Bhuvaneshwar Urissa to Shankarshan, our god brother, and it, that, that picture got lost. But I mean, Prabhupada was sitting and they were, there was an animated conversation you can see from the picture. So, 
In Vedas and Vedic culture, only in, in Vedanta is there a difference. But why did he invite them? Do, do, do you like to give a little cup to that? They belong to the same culture. They're prominent people. They lend prestige to the function. <coughs> if a famous person, excuse me. And Gangeshwarananda? Gangeshwar Ananda didn't come to the opening. I, I met him in Bombay later. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a big ashram in Vrindavan. I don't know if Jasumati Nandan didn't mention his name. Uh, later, he's not much later actually. I mean, he lived a hundred years. That's uh, Udasin Sampradaya from Sin. Gangeshwar Nanda was... He was a Mayavadi, but he liked the devotees and he liked Krishna. Yeah, he, he was blind and when he heard someone from Iskand, he must have whispered in his ear, he said, Jai Shri Krishna, Jai Shri Krishna. In Bombay, in a big hotel, there was a function. <laughs> and they're a guru of rich Sindhis. This Gangeshwar Nanda and his Udasin. They were Udasins are followers of Guru Nanak's son, Sri Chan. You didn't know that? Yeah. Guru Nanak had a son who is not one of the ten Sikh Gurus. But he was a guru of the Udasin sect. Who are Hindus? Yeah. The Sikhs are Hindus. Yeah. That's, that's all propaganda. Every Guru Dwara had Ramayana and Mahabharata. Guru Granth is full of Rama and Krishna. Hari Mandir. The temple in Amritsar is Hari Mandir. They, they can't pronounce it. They say Harminder. Harminder. But it's Hari Mandir. There, there's no deity. But the Granth is like Bhagavatam. Prabhupada said Bhagavatam is the deity. Like that. Time is... 6.55. Let's see. Opening of Hyderabad Temple was. Prabhupada was throwing roses. There's a, a window, a, a door from his room overlooking the temple room. And he was throwing roses to the rose petals to the crowd. And then he, I was behind him. No one else was there. So he called me over and I picked him up. He asked me to pick him up. So I. I never massaged Prabhupada, but I picked up Prabhupada. Why did he ask you to pick him up? Was he sick? He was or? sitting and throwing uh -huh. rose petals. There was a huge crowd. This was oh, the right. Crowd. His room overlooked the temple room. There was a balcony. There was a, like a balcony from his room right into the temple room. And so he was sitting on that balcony in the evening and throwing the rose petals at the people. <laughs> he, told, he called me over and picked me up. So I picked him up. He was elderly. Right? He was at that time 80. Actually, he was 79, 80 running. Right? No, no, that was his birthday. He asked Pooja, uh -huh. so he would have been 80. Western 80 and then 81. So he completed 81 and he was running 82 when he disappeared. And other god brothers lived longer and other god brothers lived less. It's hard to compare. Hands of the Lord. Vishakapatnam. Prabhupada and Vishakapatnam was before I joined this country. Oh, was it? Then how did you get 70, to know? 71? Then how did you get so close to Puri Maharaj? Ah, that's another story. 74 July, I accompanied a Carolite godbrother who's long gone, and he became a Mayavadi sannyasi, and then God knows what happened, to make life members in Rajamandri. Who was that? Stridish. His name was Stridish. Oh. He was in Hyderabad. In Hyderabad, there were all kinds of characters who are long gone. Never heard of them since. So we went to Rajamandri. We stayed in the uh, paper mill, West uh, East Coast paper mill. Is that what it was? East Coast Paper Mill. Um, it was Bangard Company. So there are Marwaris and uh, the manager was very friendly. He gave us a room in the paper mill and Stradish was 
He had no arrangement for prasad. So he was eating hotel food with onions. I noticed that. Strange. So Puri Maharaj's ashram, which had been inaugurated by Prabhupada, I mean, Prabhupada was a guest there. He attended the opening with disciples. Tejas, Tamal Krishna, Hansa Duda. I think it was 71. Could be 72. I'm not exactly sure of the dates. So uh, we, he, he took me there. And that's when I met Maharaj. And we took prasad there. And why, why are you eating this hotel food? When we couldn't take in the month with Maharaj. He was so nice. You know, he invited, please take your meals here. So then later on, we uh, organized the program, Chutananda's program in Rajamandri, and he came as a chief guest and he spoke. Puri Maharaj. Yeah, yeah. That was. Uh, <coughs> Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Maharaj. Proper November <laughs> 74. I went in July, then in November. Then he used to come to Hyderabad sometimes, and, and Madhav Maharaj had a mud in Hyderabad. You ever been there? Divan uh, Devdi? It's I near don't remember. I don't remember if I it's went It's in there. the old Hyderabad. Somebody, Marwari, probably donated a piece of land. And mm. they built a Gaudiya mud there. Mm. Chaitanya Gaudiya mud. And Iskan didn't have relations with them. We went, we met Sridhar, our god brother, the late Sridhar Swami. And I, in 77, we met Madhav Maharaj there. But we didn't maintain relations with them for whatever reason. But Puri Maharaj used to visit there and then he, we invited him and he lectured in Iskan Hyderabad at, on more than one occasion. Not so often, but he came and he was well received. He spoke excellent English. His English was very good. He spoke Telugu, Uriya, Bengali, English, and Hindi, Hindi. five languages. And uh, when the devotees came for Prabhupada's program in 75, he, uh, we asked him to provide prasad and we would pay. So he arranged prasadam for 150 devotees. Where was that? Uh, Rajamundri. That was the only pizza. It was a two-day train ride in a steam engine from Calcutta to Hyderabad in those days. And so East he Coast Express. Mm. Nice prasad. Prabhupada went to Rajmandri? Mm. No, not at that. Prabhupada came to Hyderabad. Uh -huh. 75. So he brought prasad to the station. <coughs> Crazy. Devotees were in the train after the Mayapur festival, before the inauguration of Krishna Balaram. There was a program in Hyderabad with Prabhupada. Five days. That's when he said, please don't give up your culture. Did I mention that today? No. I mentioned that yesterday at the school, maybe. Ten thousand people are sitting, Prabhupada said, please don't give up your culture. So what does it mean? Indian culture is the best culture. So the devotees were in the train and, you know, it was a long journey and getting prasad was a big thing. And Mahamsa didn't give him the money immediately. That was also... Oh. <laughs> it took... I had to press for that. It was 3,000 rupees for feeding 150 people. Money was tight in those days. Today, Iskan is in a better position here in India. You have crores of rupees. Salem project, but you're getting money. In those days, 3,000. <laughs> the car was 30,000, we couldn't afford. We couldn't afford a car for 30,000 rupees, new car. 30,000. Yeah, but 30,000 now is a lot. It was a lot of money in those days, yeah. yeah. Very few people had the cars. You drove one time Puri Maharaj to Mayapur? No, yeah, yeah. And sat with him and Prabhupada for an hour. They were conversing in Bengali. I couldn't follow Bengali. I still can't really understand. You know, I understand tidbits. You, you sat there while Prabhupada was talking with Puri Maharaj. Yeah, yeah, I sat in the room and it was just the two of them. In 77. And the next day Prabhupada fell sick. 
and didn't give any lectures in Mayapur. Didn't give any lectures. Three minutes past seven. Yeah, I'm supposed to take the taxi back. Okay. Hmm? And at the hour, the appointed hour, I'll be back in the morning. I'll come back to the initiation. I'm, I don't know if you want me to talk about the initiation. So what, what, who's supposed to speak? Who's supposed to speak tomorrow? The, to the lecture. One is about uh, ten offenses, the other one is about Brahman initiation. One is ten offenses and one is. About Brahman initiation. How long is each lecture? 40 minutes? 30 minutes. You have other people for that. Yeah. I haven't done any homework. Extend for is okay. When are these lectures? 10 a.m. What time are the lectures? 10 a.m. Eleven o'clock I'll start. It'll take at least two hours, more than two hours. It's about a hundred and how many? Hundred and twenty people to initiate. How many people are getting initiated? Hundred and twenty-five to initiate. It's going to take at least two hours. Okay. And your daughter is one of them. That's why you're coming. Huh? Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Prabhupada Bhakti Vikas Maharaj Ki You can put that, on the, put that on the internet, ki. huh? You can put that